Hi folks, welcome back to Northwest Bushcraft. Again, I'll start this video as I start most videos I do, and that's by apologising for not having had one on for quite a while. Um, the last one we did was where uh, we thatched the uh, the Romany kind of bender um, structure. So again, this one, uh, we come out for a three day, two night camp. We've set the camp up already. I didn't think you'd be too interested in seeing that part of it, but it's time to get a fire going now. So I thought I'd try um, something new I've got. And these are the these are known as the, the Hudson Bay Tinder Boxes. I'll give you a close up view in a minute. These are known as the, the Hudson Bay Tinder Boxes. I think originally they were a uh, like a tobacco pouch for the Hudson Bay traders when they went across to sort of northern Canada. But I'll, I'll give you a close up on this and uh, we'll see if we can get a fire going. See you in a minute. Okay, so here's the Hudson Bay Tinder Box. Uh, I, I think the, the course called known as Hudson Bay Tobacco Boxes. So originally it would have been a tobacco box and uh, it was obviously kind of modified into sort of more modern day use. It's solid brass, it opens up and inside I've just got a, a fairly basic uh, tinder kit, flint striker, steel, some rubber bands, some amadou in the bottom, um, a bit of char cloth, although I need to make more char cloth because I'm running out, it doesn't help when I throw it on the floor. And then this is um, it's a, a lighter I picked up at an antiques fair a while back. It's, uh, they call it trench art, and it's really soldiers would have made, you know, kind of things out of bullets, but there we go. So that's it, and then on the lid, here, this comes off, and on the inside of the lid, there is a lens. And that's a six times magnification lens, and that's for doing solar fire lighting. So that's the plan now, I'm going to get some of this char cloth, use that lens, and get a fire going. Okay, so we've got, this is the lid, so it's got a six times magnification lens in it, and a piece of char cloth. And probably true to most videos and what have you, more than likely the second to start doing this the sun will go in, but we'll give it a go, see if it works. So find out which direction the sun's coming in. And just hold the lens. Above. Char cloth. And I would think this the sun's pretty good. So I think before too long. Yep, there we go. Transfer that into a pre-prepared tinder bundle. go, fire.
Okay, so camp's done, the fire's lit as you saw earlier on. And what we've decided to do is go a bit kind of old school with the cooking, rather than getting pots and pans out this time. We've got three uh, sort of small lamb hocks, sharpened up some steaks, and then sterilised the steaks in the fire so we don't have any sort of bacteria getting inside the meat. We skewered them on and then just really slowly roasted them over the fire. We're using spine oak to cook with because it's got like a quite a high temperature and nice slow burn on it. So that's what's going to constitute tea. Probably get a few potatoes in as well. And it smells good enough that we think we're about to start eating them now. So, okay, thanks very much indeed. morning two at the camp. Um, we've been off and had a walk and I set some immersion activated cameras last night because we did a bit of tracking yesterday, there's quite a lot of deer sign here. So I set the motion activated cameras, uh, we went for a walk this morning and there's actually some really nice deer footage on there as well. So I'll put that on, kind of, at some point in this video I'll put it on anyway so, so you can have a look. Uh, but for now we're going to get the fire going. There's still kind of smouldering logs from last night so we're going to get the fire going from that and get some breakfast on. It is every chance there's going to be a lot of bacon eaten. So, right, we'll see you in a bit. Okay, so this is um, Phil. We've still got so quite a lot of smouldering going on in the fire, so we just collected some small tinder. And all things being well, rather than having to go kind of to the whole length of restarting the fire, there's enough heat in there that Phil hopefully should go to blow it back into flame. That's it, it's starting to flame underneath Phil, so you're doing well. So you see how thick the smoke is coming out the top now? Give that one big hard blow now and that, that should catch up. That's it, yeah, there's flame in the bottom of it. There we go. Well done, Phil. So it's not always necessary to kind of restart the fire right from scratch because there's enough heat in it from the night before. Just as Phil's done, you'll be able to blow it back into flame. Okay, so I thought I'd give you a quick tour of camp, uh, just whilst we're waiting for the fire to kind of burn down some embers so we can do some cooking. So this is Phil's setup. So he's in um, a lavo at the moment. So he slept in there last night, and then that's my Austrail swag bag. One of the warmest night sleeps I've ever had was in that. It's absolutely superb. And then here's the fire setup. Fairly simple kind of cross beam A-frame setup. And it's important to know, you know, so down here, we've got all the timbering set up and our camp admin's incredibly important because not only do you know where everything is, you obviously don't run the risk of sort of tripping over things in the night and having accidents. So all of the firewood's been sorted out and graded into size, and it's underneath that A-frame there. So again, it's easy to hand, you watch up over it in the night. And you've got the fire. And then over here. A 
Again, that's the Polish library that Rick's sleeping in. And though what he's done, I might try and get some footage of it later, but what he's done here is rather than having the pole in, he's actually attached um, a carabiner to the top of the larvae and then thrown a paracord over a branch above it and pulled it down. So the piece of paracord is actually supporting it from above. So quite a clever setup. So that's it. I'm just going to wait now for the fire to burn down. And again, in the fire, we've used spine oak in the fire. Spine oak's superb stuff because it tends to burn very hot and burns down some great embers. And obviously, you want to be cooking on embers, you don't want to be cooking on flame. Okay, so probably the next thing you'll see is an awful lot of bacon. The beauty of these cast iron pans have an amazing taste, don't they? Mm. I'm impressed with that one. And that one? Mm. Yeah. That's seasoned it. So breakfast has been done, um, if to take it from me that bacon and sausage just tasted better than it looked, that's for certain. So what we decided to do is actually come out and do a bit of foraging as well because uh, we kind of scoped this land out a bit earlier and there's quite a lot of resources here. Uh, one of which is pig nuts and Phil is currently digging up some pig nuts so what we'll do is we'll, we'll pan over to Phil and have a look at some pig nuts. So that's um, that's the flower there, and it grows sort of eight to twelve inches tall. Small white flower heads on top, and then the leaves. And I'll, I'll do a close up on this in a second. The leaves look a bit like dill, 
and obviously at the end you have this really really fine white root comes down and at the end of that will be the pig nut. Okay so here's a here's a close up of the, the plant itself. So these are the the flower heads here, sort of small white flower heads. And then it has these small sort of dill like leaves here. And it's in right at the end. If you follow it down, there'll be this white root here. And the end of that would sit the pignut down. Oops, dropped it. Yeah. So the pignut would sit attached roughly like that. Okay, so I so say do be careful when you're um, foraging for wild food. You need to make sure you know what you're doing. I thought I'd give you a quick look, so look around where we are. That's the, the woodland that we're staying in. And our camp is kind of deep down the bottom of that ravine and into the woods. This pans around. As you can see, there's a, a whole host of different trees here. There's willow, ash, hawthorn, plenty of oak, silver birch and so on. Come around. I'm actually down so that path down there that's roughly in the middle of the screen now, that's where we filmed the deer earlier on with the motion activated cameras. And there's Phil, happily foraging away for some pig nuts. And then we've got Rick down there. Now Rick's a, a professional photographer, so he's trying to record sort of photographically all the various aspects of the pig nuts, flowers, leaves and such. So hopefully we might be able to get some of his photographs on the video. Okay, so um, carrying on the sort of theme of today, which is foraging, and the, the guys in the course really want to learn about foraging, so we've had a good scout about and we found this. This is Chicken of the Woods, and it's featured in pretty much every sort of food for free foraging book that you'll ever pick up. It grows predominantly on oak trees, although not exclusively. Actually, I found this on yew trees as well, but obviously yew is quite toxic, so if you do find it growing on yew trees, best leave it well alone. But in this instance, it's grown on a huge big oak tree. It can only ever really be confused with a couple of things. Um, one not so obvious one is birch polypore. Of course, the birch polypore only ever really grows on birch and it tends to be white uh, with a grey top. And the other one is beefsteak fungus. Um, again, with beefsteak fungus, when you actually cut into beefsteak fungus, it's quite evident that it's not chicken of the woods because when you cut into it, it does have like a blood like substance inside it, just like a raw meat inside. Whereas this one actually looks a bit like um, cut chicken. So, what we'll do is we'll, we'll cut into this one. I'll actually show you what it's like inside. I said the best bits are the sort of front parts here of these brackets. So if I cut a piece away here, it's really quite soft. So that's it cut open. Actually, when you rip it, you can actually see fibres inside, and that's why it looks. That's why it's sort of one of the reasons it's called chicken. In other words, it's because actually it looks like cooked chicken when you rip it open inside with these fibres. So what we're going to do is harvest quite a bit more of this and then we've got some steak for tea. So we've got fills off gathering pig nuts now, a chicken in the woods and some steak for tea. Okay, join us in a bit. Okay, so here's a, another shot of the chicken in the woods. We've got obviously Rick who said earlier is a professional photographer. He's one of the guys on the course this weekend. Taking some close up photographs for his own records.
the uh, yeah. hold on. So hold it on that. Yeah. Use that to then mm. go onto there. Yeah. Yeah. Smoking almost yeah. instantly. Got it? Yeah. Bring it right round. Keep it tight then. That's it. It's gone. Yeah. Oh, it's still going, yeah? Nope. Got <laughs> the laces. There, so it's about to help catch up. Okay. Something that close it. That's it. So now you need to make sure that this is in contact with that growing ember. So pull it in like that. That's it. And make sure it doesn't burst into flames. To keep, to, don't put face too close to it. One big hard blow. Ah, that's nice. In your eyes. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Flame. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Good? Yeah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yeah, <thanks. laughs> Uh, that's Phil doing the chicken of the woods so sort of just browning off the chicken of the woods and some onions we're going to have with the steak tonight and he's got it on a fairly high heat for obvious reasons we need to make sure that chicken of the woods is well cooked through Have you eaten chicken in the woods before you go? I've had it. It's really good taste to it, really good. Fresh 
Yeah. Right, so just to finish off today's filming, I thought we'd show you a view of tea. So what we've got here is, in no particular order, we've got some steaks, some new potatoes with some wild water mint that we found and foraged earlier on. And over in this pan here, we've got the chicken of the woods that we found, some red onion, and the pig nuts that Phil and the guys did up earlier on. And I'm pretty certain that will make a very, very nice tea. Part shop bought, part foraged.